Hello, everyone. This is Jimmy Cultist, back again with another stealth video. Today we're going to be covering the subject of uh, line of sight. And I suppose maybe we'll throw in a few other things, maybe an enemy indicator, you know, to show where they are behind walls and things. Some stealth games include this so that you don't get taken unawares. I feel like, though, generally I would favor not knowing where the enemy is. I feel like that would make it more challenging, but I'm going to include that just for people who want to know how to do that. Now, for line of sight, there's, I guess, a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. But we want to sort of, um... What is the word? We want to sort of make it accurate to our laser scopes here. both in distance and in height. So I'll see what I can do. Let's, um... We may need a little block to use as a mount, or a, or a basis, I should say. A basis for our, um... Paint Flex. We are going to use Paint Flex, I think. Actually, though, maybe we could use stickers. It depends. Or something of that nature. We'll see what we end up using. Whatever it is, though, it has to roughly align with uh, this laser scope. We'll try using a text displayer. And if we're lucky, this should uh, work out quite well. Let's see here. What we're going to need is wonkiness to create a taper. Well, not wonkiness, actually. Just taper. And we'll try adding more of these. I think that's good. We could try shrinking it down if necessary. We'll see. Set it to in scene. I don't know if you want it to always be on top. That might not be a good idea. We'll see. Allow rotation. And we're going to use grid snap for this. So it's nice and easy to just turn it over and flip it like so. And the problem is, if we don't get this accurate, it's going to be really bad for the player. Because basically they'll walk into something and not realize it, and we really, really don't want that. I think I might just move this for now. Alright, I think... let's look at this. We'll set it to on top temporarily, always on top, just so we can see where it is. And we're going to turn down the opacity a bit. And now let's check this, see if it roughly aligns with the pattern we have. Mm, it's not really wide enough. We might need two of these babies just to get the job done. We'll see about that. And we'll turn off the in-scene indicator. And we'll try two more. We'll tilt this one here. You do want it to be roughly uh, 
in sync with the other one. Also, the fact that they have opacity that's leaking through might be a problem, but... I feel like this would be better than using Paint Flex for several reasons. Less costly on the graphics and uh, kind of just works better in general. It does look a little bit atrocious, um, kind of. Depends on your leanings, I guess. Oh, another thing that's wrong with it is the fact that it follows his head at an angle, which means um, it'll like, you know, point down to the floor. But ordinarily what I think you would do is you could have um, let's copy this brick. Or maybe this one. Let's copy that one. Of course, that won't work, because then we'll have him, uh, if we put, yeah, we can't do that either. I know you don't know what it was I was going to do, but it wouldn't work, so maybe we'll just have it so that when he sees you, he needs to have a reaction. He needs to be like, I see you. Ooh. And we'll make that, uh, um... What do you call it? A little addendum to this, you know. A little bit extra content in there. How to make enemies surprised or something like that. We'll even have the famous uh, exclamation point. If you're familiar with Metal Gear Solid, you probably know about that. I'm only familiar with it partially, but even I know about that. I think that's a good position. And you're going to want to make it really big so that the player can see it wherever it shows up. And we're gonna use a little keyframe here to shrink it down so that it kind of like kind of pops up. And turn down the opacity with the second one so that it sort of fades into nothingness. We'll give it a test real quick. 
That looks pretty decent. Um, we may need a keyframe to shut some things off. We're also going to want a system where the line of sight disappears once you've been spotted. So let's just go ahead and select these and turn off the power. And I feel like if you had a keyframe, or not a keyframe, but um, if, you had, if you used paint, it might actually indicate the barrier a little bit better but like I said it costs a little graphics to add paint flex even if it's only a tiny bit and there's another problem where it kind of changes your ability if you want to possess the puppet and you have something scoped into his head let me try and demonstrate this it's it's a bit difficult to explain but we'll make a big giant I don't know line of sight for him so that you can kind of get an idea maybe I I'm wrong about this. It's been a while, so it's possible things have changed, but from what I remember, it's kind of a problem. And we're not going to make this look very good, because the main intention is just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Alright, we're going to take this... Ooh. Having trouble scoping in. Let's go ahead and make this invisible for a temporariness. All right, so we're going to take this and go into his head once. And we're going to go ahead and unhide all these things that we've hidden. And we're going to use a puppet possession recorder to show you... See, look, you can't see him anymore. Because he's got this big thing stapled to his head. And the camera, you know, is messing with that. So that's the reason why I'm not using paint flex. It's true that there might be other ways. For instance, you could use a bolt to staple it to his head. That's one way you could do it. I, I think I will show you how to do that before we conclude with the rest of this, just because I want to cover all the angles of how you could possibly carry out this particular, you know, method. All you're going to need for this is just a simple cube. We'll make it white so that it stands out from the one that's already there. We're also going to try now that we are now that we're actually going to do the paint flex, we're gonna to try to make it accurate. Alright. Close that. This should do. I guess we can't see it anymore, so we'll just have to use use our memories for this one. I'm pretty sure it goes out to about here-ish. If we make it longer, we can always shorten it. Oh, another thing we might want to do... That's about right, actually. Let me look at that. Well, we're going to want to angle it a bit. I think this ought to work. Like I said, we can shorten it. I'll show you how we can do that. First we'll join the two. And 
make them bright. And then we'll just go here to endpoint. And if you just uh, we'll turn off preview and visibility, you can see here you can alter the endpoint, allowing you to, you know, make it shorter if that's what you want to do. Anyway, let's get back down to business. Where's that cube? Oh, there it is. Now we're just going to go ahead and group these two things together. Make sure this is non-collidable and ignore gravity and density and invisible. Turn it all down to zero. All right, now we can scope in. And we'll just take a simple ball joint. And now it should be stapled to his head. There's probably going to be some downsides to this, of course. Full tightness and full springiness. Well, let's just make it springy. Sometimes tightness has weird properties. But that's that's one way you can do it. Let's take a look at this again. I'm going to try to possess him so that we can see if it still blocks the camera or not. I don't think it will. Yeah doesn't block the camera. So a bolt is probably your most thermo effective way, although bolts, five of them is 1% thermo, at least in the old days. That might have changed now. Just disregard what I said, if that's the case. And we'll pull it, ooh, let's pull this down. Just pull it down a little bit to his feet. I think that's a pretty good indicator of his line of sight. We'll keep both of them intact. I don't know if I'd use both if I was making a game, but just for now, we'll keep them both in case we want to add anything later. But the main thing is, when you are spotted, we're going to want these indicators to disappear. Possibly you could also have them turn a different color before they disappear. Let's try that real quick. We'll have this turn yellow to indicate that we've been spotted. And we'll scope into this and make these yellow also. Maybe even up the opacity a bit. It's not really yellow, it's more of an orange. Yeah, that's more of a yellowy color. I like yellow, obviously, but it's not my favorite color. All right, is this what we did? Which one is the one? I think we turned it on with this. This is the yellow indicator, so we'll make this yellow real quick. I've never said the word yellow in, in one sentence so many times. All right, now let's turn all these off. Well, I guess, we'll, let me think about it. Yeah, we probably do want to turn them off. And this is only temporary. And the way this is going to work is uh, when we get spotted. Which I think is in alert. I forget how we do that. Oh yes, it's these things right here. We're going to want those to shut off temporarily. And we're actually going to want it to be uh, hooked up a bit differently. We're going to take this out of here and stick it in scene. And scene is going to have its own little uh, switch.
And we're going to shut these things off real quick with a shut keyframe. Now, what was I thinking about? There's something else we got to do. Maybe it'll come to me. Oh, we may want him to face the direction of the player because um, when it comes to this, you know, he probably would look in the direction of something that he sees. So we'll just go ahead and grab this real quick. Make it pretty big, and we're also going to change what it looks for. It's not looking for distraction, it's looking for player. A tag labeled player. And we'll kind of like lower this down a bit. Alright, that should do it. Let's see how this works out. Well, he did see us. Oh, one thing I forgot. I guess we won't... We won't want to shut these off with this same... Well, just a sec. We could just easily go ahead and copy this. And then go back into the original one. Just press triangle on these and un undo the animation. Because we're going to want a separate keyframe for that. Then we're going to go back in here with the new keyframe and we're going to undo these animations. And this one is just going to shut off the visuals. And I guess if we want to permanently shut off the visuals we'll just stick this in here. Let's see if it's on power. Yes, it's it's powered on. Oh, I see. He's uh, getting stuck because it's playing over and over again. Luckily, this is really easy to fix. Just stick that right there. Another thing you're going to want is we may need a secondary node. Because we don't, even if we limit it, because it keeps getting triggered, it will play again once it reaches the end of this. So what we're really going to want is to have A hooked up to the power of this secondary node. That way when we switch over to a new one, it won't be able to trigger this again. He's a little slow on the uptake. I might speed that up a bit. By the way, if you wanted him to... Uh... We could be a bit cheeky with this. Anyway, that's how to set up line of sight, and I suppose also how to make enemies alert to your presence. Hopefully you found that helpful. We're going to give a quick shout out to our monthly supporters on coffee. Lovely people all. There they go. And that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.